comedy is a place where the mind goes to tickle itself. That's what she said. <laughs> Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 TV crossovers of the century so far. What, you went? Yeah. When? Over spring break. What could I do? Two days after I got that invitation, I was on the set of Cougar Town, Jeff. Cougar Town. For this list, we're looking at the most exciting times two or more shows united on the small screen since the year 2000. We will, however, be excluding spin-offs that simply crossed over with their parent program. Pitch us your dream TV crossover in the comments below. Number 20. Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Iron Fist, and Marvel's Luke Cage, The Defenders. One episode just isn't enough to do this team up justice, so they got a whole series instead. As the culmination of the Marvel Netflix shows, this miniseries took the stars of four different shows and put them into one action-packed sucker punch of a season. Jessica? Luke. How you been? Long story. We have to get out of here. Who's he? That's right, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Daredevil, and Iron Fist all in one. Since the characters were already developed, The Defenders hits the ground running with some extraordinary fight scenes and dramatic plot lines. Plus, who doesn't love seeing Sigourney Weaver play a villain? If we speed the process, it will not be quiet. I'm aware. The excellent cast chemistry and higher stakes meant this mini Avengers team truly assembled. Number 19, Riverdale and Sabrina the Teenage Witch, Riverdale. The recipe for this potion is as follows. A mystical asteroid, an ancient ritual, and a very welcome house guest. Trust us, the concoction is downright spellbinding. Even before Sabrina shows up, it's a plain treat to see Riverdale's ensemble flex their acting chops by portraying their own ancestors. Of course, the main event is Sabrina herself, whose snarky wit makes us wish Kieran and Shipka would become a series regular already. Well, well, well. Look at what the black cat dragged in. After all, this worthwhile adventure is basically an episode-long thesis of how Sabrina might fit into the series universe. Thankfully, this wouldn't be the last time Riverdale needed a true witch. There is no death for witches. Only transformation. Number 18, CSI Trilogy, CSI Miami, CSI New York, and CSI Crime Scene Investigation. It'd be very difficult to say without first taking a look at the evidence. We'd love another set of eyes on it. I'll be there as soon as I can. Across three shows, three cities, and one very nasty homicide, this multi-part case proved nothing is more gripping than a fictional crime scene. Though it aired as one continuous story, the most impressive aspect of this crossover is how well each show managed to sustain its own unique relationships and conflicts. The distinct visual identity and flashy transitions from each episode are all still intact. It's just that the case doesn't wrap up in tidy fashion like you would expect. Instead of going for bigger, this keeps things intimate by almost solely relying on Lawrence Fishburne to hold the sprawling cold case together. How can I go back after everything that's happened? <laughs> All you have to do is walk through the door. As expected, he does it without breaking a sweat. Number 17, Static Shock and Batman Beyond, Static Shock. There's no time like the present for a good old fashioned superhero team up, or the future if you wanna get technical. When Static suits up with Batman to save a kidnapped hero, it comes with a few stipulations. First, we don't have guests here. And second, I'm Batman. And I'm Beyonce. Well, whoever you are, you don't belong here. Yeah. For example, Terry McGinnis is the man in the suit, not Bruce Wayne, and they're trying to rescue an aged-up version of Static himself. Fortunately, even 40 years in the future, both Terry and Virgil prove that youth, spandex, and crime fighting are a heroic package. Got a plan? Go down there and fight real hard? That's what I was thinking and I don't even have a mental. Smashing the commentary of Static Shock with Batman Beyond's chic aesthetic is a winning combination in every way. Though, from these shows, that's hardly shocking. Number 16, iCarly and Victorious. I party with Victorious. In order to expose a cheating boyfriend, Carly Shay and the rest of her pals end up on a first-class trip to a Los Angeles house party. There, they run into a clique from Hollywood Arts, and the rest sings for itself. When he gave you yours, did he say, It's, it's one, one of a kind, kind, just like you? <laughs> <laughs>
even with so many characters, it feels like everyone still gets a moment to make it shine. Trina is still Trina, Spencer is still Spencer, but now they have more zany weirdos to bounce gags off of. By the end, it truly feels like these characters could be friends. Though really, the entire special is worth it just to hear them blend their theme songs at the end. When I make you shine, just leave it all to me. Number 15. Cougar Town and Community Cougar Town and Community and the award for most subtle crossover ever goes to these guys. In an innocuous scene, Community jokes that Abed's obsession with pop culture landed him a gig as an extra on Cougar Town. This morning I saw this big billboard and it said cheap tickets to Hawaii and I thought, yeah, you know, why not? Why don't I just max out my credit card and just go to Hawaii? The catch? That's exactly what happened. In the season 2 finale of Cougar Town, Abed is sitting in the background continually pulling focus. But hilariously, it's never overtly mentioned. Better yet, the crossover doesn't end there either. Cougar Town alumni Dan Bird and Busy Phillips later returned the favor by making their own cameos in Community's season finale, once again unacknowledged. <laughs> this Easter egg of a crossover is just the kind of meta humor that's made both shows bona fide cult hits. Number 14. Lilo and Stitch the Series and Kim Possible Lilo and Stitch the Series It's a fairly normal day in Hawaii. That is, until some non-natives add kidnapping Stitch to their itinerary. Against Dr. Draken and Shigo, Lilo decides to call and beep a certain crime-fighting high schooler for backup. Your email specifically said it was urgent. What's the sitch? No. Who's Stitch? No, no, no. What's the sitch? It's like a catchphrase. Stitch isn't a catchphrase. He's my friend! The flashy action and comedic character interactions are as excellent as you would expect. But the real heart of this episode is Kim and Lilo. Namely, that they do not get along, at least at first. Instead of barreling ahead with more story, the episode takes the time to create a real sense of camaraderie between these characters. Good call. Now that that's taken care of, you guys want to go to a luau? Well, they say I can do anything. Add in Jumba hilariously mistaking Rufus for one of his creations, and it's safe to say this experiment was a total success. Number 13. Bones and Sleepy Hollow Bones and Sleepy Hollow Fact meets fiction in this genre-defying mashup. Who are you and what are you doing in my laboratory? Is there a cosplay competition going on that I wasn't invited to? Even though these teams are years apart, they make a surprisingly formidable alliance. At least, once the time travel is explained. The supernatural elements, or lack thereof, are a delightful source of comedy as the casts get to know each other. The twisted mystery keeps the pace brisk as the newly formed gang navigates monsters, each other, and, of course, some bones. Our only complaint is that Ichabod and Abby couldn't stay longer. Though, to be fair, it's literally a matter of time until they meet again. If colonial Americans had Greek fire, why didn't they use it during the battles of the revolution? And you still haven't sufficiently explained how you came across Washington's letter. Go, monsters. Number 12. Phineas and Ferb and the MCU Phineas and Ferb Ferb, are you expecting someone? Not them. There may be 104 days of summer vacation, but finding time to save the world is still a big ask, even for this pair of young geniuses. Still, they're the only ones capable of such a feat after Dr. Doofenshmirtz's innator robs Earth's mightiest heroes of their powers. If it didn't spell the end of the world, we'd almost be proud of Dr. D. As out of left field as this crossover might seem, Marvel characters actually completely work in the zany universe of Phineas and Ferb. The classic city-stomping action at the end has enough charm and gusto to make it all more than a worthy way to spend a summer afternoon. And now, behold the destruction of the entire Tri-State! Hey Ferb, is that our space station? This episode could lift Mjolnir, that's all we're saying. Number 11. Archer and Bob's Burgers Archer For fans of both shows, this one is a heck of a treat. While it is an episode of Archer, we actually start off at Bob's Burger Shop with Bob's family, his voice, and even his mustache. Of course, though, we quickly realize that's not Bob behind the grill. It's an amnesiac Archer. Y yes you can rub them, but just please don't hurt my family. I mean, we're not robbers. Oh. Well then, then what do you want? 
you. Alongside the suitably hilarious Bob's Burgers cameos, this twist works so well because both leading men are voiced to perfection by the fantastic H. John Benjamin. The behind-the-scenes wherewithal that went into this gag makes it clear that the show knew exactly what it was doing. There may not be another crossover, well, ever, that plays on expectations quite like this. What I am gonna do is find out who this archer jerk is and why Russian people want him dead. I'm also probably gonna do a spa weekend. Number 10, episode 2.4, Masterslave.AES, Mr. Robot and ALF. Puppets and cybercrime don't usually go together, but that's kind of the whole point of this trippy sequence. A comatose Elliot hallucinates himself inside an 80s sitcom, complete with a stage-like setup, a laugh track, and, of course, an appearance from Alf himself. I'm sorry. But there's nothing nostalgic about this childhood favorite's cameo. The off-kilter tone of the scene makes even this furry rodent feel deeply unsettling. And this bizarre crossover somehow manages to justify the absurdity without abandoning it either. It gets major props for tying this weird excursion into the main story, but more than that, for also making Alf of all characters relevant in a gritty crime show. Hey, no problem, Meister. Give me four. <laughs> Or not! Number 9. That's So Sweet Life of Hannah Montana. That's So Raven, The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, and Hannah Montana. To say the Tipton Hotel has some VIP guests would be a massive understatement. There's just an undeniable novelty about seeing Raven Baxter, Hannah Montana, and Zack and Cody all interact under the same roof. You're Hannah Montana! And you're wearing cake! <laughs> Mmm, vanilla, my favorite. Naturally, it leads to visions, music, and hijinks galore, but without ever getting too crowded. It helps that each episode still feels like a part of its parent show, foregoing the baggage of a typical bloated crossover. Now that's the best of both worlds. You're Robbie Ray! My mom thought you were dead. <laughs> She's gonna be so excited you're alive! I'm kind of happy about that myself. The story gets time to breathe and let the characters naturally bond with each other, too. By the time it checks out, this three-part stay at the Tipton has definitely earned five stars. Number 8. Scandal and How to Get Away with Murder Scandal and How to Get Away with Murder Carrie Washington and Viola Davis have proven time and time again to be some of the most capable actors in the whole business. So, it was a stroke of sheer luck that they both starred in legal programs at the same time on the same network. That all led to a crossover event that's practically award-winning on principle alone. Very good. Ms. Keating. Annalise Keating. The juicy story involving prejudice, deception, and even the Supreme Court is just the kind of high-stakes case worthy of two characters of this caliber. But really, it all feels like an excuse to get these two immaculate actresses in the same room. And no one can complain about that. So allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Olivia Pope, and I don't have to explain myself to anyone. Especially you. Number 7. The Adventures of Jimmy Neutron, Boy Genius, and the Fairly Odd Parents. The Jimmy Timmy Power Hour Franchise. Hello, Hello Timmy! Timmy! Timmy? Who's Timmy? I'm Jimmy! Jimmy Neutron! <laughs> the stars of these beloved animated shows jumped through hoops, universes, and even visual dimensions to finally meet. The superb commitment to each series' art style is just one of the many examples of why this TV movie works so well. It truly seems to understand the unique zest that made both of its properties popular in the first place. So even though Jimmy and Timmy look a little different, their banter still rings totally true to their characters. Timmy! Cindy? Neutron! Crab cakes! If you need more convincing of this collab's quality, it proved successful enough to kickstart a whole trilogy of wacky adventures. Number 6. Brooklyn Nine-Nine and New Girl. Brooklyn Nine-Nine and New Girl. NYPD, hey, I need to commandeer this vehicle. It's a crossover. A, it's a crossover SUV and you can't have it. The only unanswered question from this comedic mashup is how no one thought to do it sooner. It's almost scary how well Jake Peralta and Jess Day share a scene, and don't even get us started on Boyle and Winston finally meeting. But probably the best part of these charming cameos is that they don't detract from what are overall pretty normal episodes. The tidbits enrich the story without overtaking it, which makes the shows feel more like organic parts of the same world. Okay, then name one law. Don't kill people, 
That's on me. I set the bar too low. Look, can you please just get out? Okay, you can drive, but I'm not getting out. Also, I have the seat warmer on. I don't just have a really hot butt. It's a refreshing reminder that crossovers don't have to be grand. They just have to be entertaining. And that is something that both of these shows definitely have down pat. Number 5. The Simpsons and Futurama – The Simpsons To prevent a future overrun by radioactive bunnies, just roll with it, the Planetary Express delivery crew knocks on the door of a certain dysfunctional family. Not even Bender's metal heart can resist the zany fun of meeting the Simpsons. Prove it! What happens to Homer Simpson in the future? I don't know. You die? Oh. My. God. He's telling the truth. Despite its scant 22-minute runtime, the story manages to squeeze in all of the fun character interactions you'd want from this union. Even better, the time-traveling plotline somehow meshes the absurdist tone of both series perfectly. I can't believe you're all giving up without a fight. Lisa, we're just a package delivery service. And not a very good one. In the end, it's honestly just surprising The Simpsons aren't the cause of more global cataclysms. Number 4. Supernatural and the Scooby-Doo Franchise – Supernatural Even though they both follow teams investigating the unknown, these two brands are otherwise about as far apart as you can get. One proves monsters are real, the other does the opposite and is, you know, animated. But against initial judgments, this is a delightful ride in the mystery machine. Great. So we're stuck in a cartoon with a talking dog. Not just any talking dog. THE talking dog. The greatest talking dog in history. Both the on-screen Supernatural cast and the veteran Scooby-Doo ensemble deliver pitch-perfect vocal performances, fitting the wacky tone of the episode. The zany mystery represents the most fun parts of both series, and includes plenty of hilarious moments, like the Scooby gang realizing they can't unmask these monsters. If there are ghosts, that means there's an afterlife! Heaven! Hell! Am I going to hell? We told you every freaking time, but did you ever listen to Scoob and me? No! This is one collaboration worth a whole box of Scooby Snacks. Number 3. Crisis on Infinite Earths – Arrow, The Flash, Supergirl, Legends of Tomorrow, Batwoman, and more. Whew, talk about a lineup. The CW spent nearly a decade assembling a Justice League of sorts on the small screen, and it paid off with one of the most ambitious crossovers of all time. Holy All-Star Squadron. Hi. Hi. How are you? Ralph Dibney, elongated man, ready to help kick butt. Ignore him. It's his first crossover. A staggering five shows joined forces for one epic, supersized saga. And they weren't even the only ones. The multiversal storyline allowed cameos from every corner of the DC universe. And the scale of the conflict is totally worth the effort. He sacrificed everything for this new world and we will not fail him. We will not fail this world. High stakes action and a truly outstanding roster of characters makes this feel like a comic book in the best way possible. This is more than a love letter to the Arrowverse. It is a celebration of everything DC does best. Number 2. The X-Files and Cops – The X-Files from the shaky opening moments to the somber closing credits, this is unlike any other case Mulder and Scully have ever investigated. After all, nothing grounds the world of X-Files more than actual cops. Mulder, have you noticed that we're on television? I don't think it's live television, Scully. She just said But it's a camera and it's recording. Shot in the style of the police enforcement docuseries, the grainy quality transforms what could have been a simple monster of the week into a visceral experience that you can't take your eyes off of. Go, go, go! Go, go, go! Hand him up your head! Hand him up your head! Go, go, go! Turn up your head! It's hilarious, political, and tragic, often all at the same time. Because of that, it's still regarded as one of the best episodes of The X-Files ever made. If that's not high praise, we don't know what is. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Family Guy and The Simpsons – Family Guy There may never be two shows that feel as primed for a crossover as these two. Their familiar brands of crude humor make the Griffin stop in Springfield feel less like a gimmick and more like a natural extension of the series. Wow, you work at a nuclear power plant? What's that? I don't know. Pretty impressive. I just work at a brewery. 
Oh my god, you get to work with beer? Homer meeting Peter is long overdue. And quite frankly, we could say the same about most of these characters. The way they interact is so natural that it's almost easy to forget that they're not all in the same show to begin with. It is a tour de force of comedy that encompasses the reason these two shows are still on the air today. It's got heart, it's got family, and of course, it's got a heaping dose of vulgarity. Let's just agree to stay a half hour away from each other. With a pile of garbage between us. Worst chicken fight ever. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.